What's the cruelest prank you've ever seen? There was that YouTube family that was like daddy of five or something where one of the kids was literally abused constantly. They would do horrible poo to this boy and then say it was a prank for the channel and he would be absolutely destroyed and scream he hated YouTube. Anything done as a prank for YouTube. That's almost as bad as child abuse pranking for YouTube. I have no idea what radio station this was on as I was only a kid, but they used to do prank phone calls. I have little to no recollection of many of them except this one, as even as a kid I could tell it was just wrong. The radio host rang up a woman and advised that he was the manager of her husband's company and he was very sorry to tell her that he had been involved in an accident with some heavy machinery and it had resulted in his death. As you would expect the woman was beside herself with being told her husband had just died, she was wailing on the phone and the radio host couldn't really get another word in to explain it was a joke, and then they just cut off the phone call and played a song. Even as a kid I knew it was a really stupid and cruel idea, and I'm pretty sure that was the last time they did a prank phone call. Deep voice hey hey, you just got pranked by Wacky and Steve on 96.1. The girl who hid her boyfriend's wheelchair on YouTube the poo wasn't funny. Oof, I remember one where a girlfriend deleted a man's like 10 to 15 year effort NBA 2K team. Just the absolute heartbreak as he sits down and buries his face in his hands and just says babe, you don't understand, I cannot get that back. Girl legit thought there was some way to undelete it. I remember when the ALS challenge was popular I read an article about a prank played on a special needs high schooler. These kids told him it was just water in the bucket, but it was also piss, cigarette butts, all sorts of disgusting poo. Then they put the video all over the internet, as though the bucket wasn't enough. That's, that's assault, right? Please tell me somebody was prosecuted for that. A friend of a friend in high school had her boyfriend pretend that he died. He had one of his friends call her saying he had died in a car accident and had someone else calling up pretending to be a doctor from the hospital. She was hysterical. Later that day, after she kept asking the fake doctor which hospital it was so she could be there, she found out it was all pranked to see if she cared. Horrible. Anyway, they broke up. To this day it's the nastiest prank I've seen in person. Had a friend do that too. To this day, I don't trust him when he says he had health issues, because he had us all worried sick for weeks, saying he was having heart surgery on X day. The day of, I woke up to find a post on his socials from his dad, saying that he died, that he was so scared before going under and now he wanted one last message. April Fools. I was so angry. Actually, no one was laughing cause this was not a short message it was five paragraphs long and I was crying when I got to the message. I still don't fully trust him and honestly remembering it makes me even angrier. Darren Brown, English illusionist, did a TV show a few years ago. Long story short, he convinced a young lad who had got really drunk the night before that he had killed a girl. They set him up so bad. Psychologically, it looked like they had broken this poor lad. To the point where everything they had set up, actors, set, fake police etc etc, made the lad so convinced that he had killed someone, that he handed himself into the fake police station and admitted to a murder. I'll never forget the one tear trickling down this kid's face in the devastation at what he thought he had done. Then bloody Darren Brown appears from behind a screen like, surprise. It was effing cruel and has stuck with me for a long time. I've actually found a link to it. Link. I remember seeing a video where they switched the pregnancy test to a fake positive one on their friend, struggling with infertility. F ed up greater than I remember seeing a video where they switched the pregnancy test to a fake positive one. That's a fed up. Greater than on their friend, struggling with infertility. Oh man that's really a fed up. I was once prank called by someone, a classmate presumably, and they told me they were going to kill my best friend who was in the same class as me. It was really effing weird, the school never figured out who it was, they just asked if my friend, had any enemies. Bro, we are 11. TBH I had far more enemies at 11 than I do as an adult. Kids are assholes sometimes. The Daddy05 YouTuber, pranks. Those weren't pranks, they were child abuse. If I recall correctly, all of those kids have been placed with competent and caring relatives since then. 
My dad told me that when he was a kid, a friend of his gave him a glass of lemonade, it was Drano mixed with something else and my dad vomited for hours, thankfully he survived and went on to have kids, but his vocal cords were never the same. A friend of mine faked her suicide to get back at her boyfriend for April Fool's Day. I had helped her without knowing she was going that far. Her boyfriend had called her a slut and dumped her when she told him she was pregnant. Don't miss living in college dorms. Don't miss either of them. They sound like a lovely couple. In sixth grade one opened my locker and a note from the boy I had a crush on fell out saying he liked me too. A bunch of girls in my grade were there when I found it and were super happy for me, or I thought they were. When I went to the boy to ask him about it he said he didn't write it in the group of girls who were there when I found the note had written it. I turned around and sure enough they're laughing. But it crushed me, not that the boy didn't like me back but because I didn't think these girls I'd gone to school with since first grade were that mean. A couple weeks later the group played a similar joke on one of the girls who was actually in on the prank against me, and I got a genuine apology from her after she realized how bad I must have felt. None of the other girls ever apologized. Edit. This comment blew up more than I thought it would haha. Thank you for the awards, much appreciated. F them bitches. When I was a kid, somehow my classmates found it funny to piss in other people's cans of soda. I did not have a good childhood. Dear God where did you grow up? The gulags? Middle class America dude. Seen a video of two small girls. One told the other to look at the doorknob really close as it distorts your face. She then slammed the door right into her face hitting her teeth. FYI, if you're missing teeth, as 8 to 9 year olds tend to, it's really effing easy to break shiny new adult teeth. Source. A large dental bill. Prank war going on in between two houses that were next to each other in San Diego, California circa 2014. My cousin lived in one of the houses and this happened when I went to visit him a few years back. House number one pulled a prank that led to a member in house number two being late for his first day of work. It was collateral damage but the guy ended up getting fired for it. Guy who lost his job came home furious. He then took a 15 pound medicine ball and painted it to look just like a soccer ball. He tossed the medicine ball into the front yard of house number one and waited. When he saw the guy come out of the house he yells, Hey, Josh, can you kick that ball back over here? Dude proceeds to take a running start and square up and kick that soccer ball with every ounce of strength he had. Poor bastard went down almost immediately in tears and screaming. Ended up breaking three bones in his right foot. Just brutal. And this is when the pranks ended and became attacks, I'm just guessing. Someone asked a guy to be her boyfriend, he said yes and the next day she invited all her friends to tell him that she did it as a joke. When I was 16, I had a crush on a boy a couple years older. I got a call on my birthday and he asked me on a date. I was so excited and said yes. Only to hear laughter. It was the father of one of my classmates, who also knew my family and parents. Who the F does that? I have kids of my own now, and the immaturity of it still astounds me. Saw a guy tip over the porta potty with someone in it. That memory is clear. I think it was his GF. Probably wasn't after that. Lol. I just got pregnant. Aren't you happy for me? Said on April 1st in front of a woman who had a stillbirth a month before. My Phil made a prank post on FB a few years ago saying both his daughters-in-law were pregnant at once and he was so excited. Except neither of us were and I had scheduled our appointment for an infertility workup three days prior. Syl had to explain to her elderly grandmother that she wasn't actually pregnant and when she was, it wouldn't be found out from her FB post. That kind of post is always in poor taste, but to do it related to someone else, who you didn't even give a heads up to. Ugh. The first time I met my brother's new girlfriend she pulled me aside and started crying. She told me that she was pregnant but my brother wasn't ready to tell anyone. She asked me to check up on him cause he was really nervous. A couple days go by and I texted her to see how she was doing and if my brother was doing okay and if they needed anything. She asked me what I was talking about. I said the baby. She replied. Oh, you believed me. I was only joking, I'm not pregnant. I can't believe you fell for that. This wasn't some teenager either, she was approximately 30. Yes I told my brother. Yes, he still ended up marrying her. 
almost 10 years later I still refuse to trust her. When I was 17, my parents moved the family a couple of states away. I broke up with my, then, girlfriend because at 17 you don't really do the long distance thing. A week after we got settled into our new house, my, then ex, girlfriend called me and said that she was pregnant. It was plausible, we had had, going away and never seeing you again, sex, but unlikely, I had worn a condom. So I believed her and rode Greyhound buses for 36 hours to go back and be with her, whatever the outcome might be. And being young and stupid, I proposed. Her parents took me in, reluctantly, which is understandable. My, then XX, girlfriend and I moved into their finished basement apartment in preparation for the blessed event. A couple of weeks later, she refused to have anyone go with her to her pregnancy doctor. A week later, she didn't want to have sex for a whole week. A week or so after that, her mom started asking why she wasn't showing at all, why there were no doctor bills, etc. Then it all came out, she had been lying to get me to come back and be with her. Angry words were exchanged, we re-broke up. Oddly enough, her parents took my side and were super kind to me. They kicked my now XXX, girlfriend upstairs to her own room for a week and let me stay in their basement while we worked things out. And when it was painfully obvious that there would be no wedding, they bought me an airline ticket home. My dad summed it up when I got home. Well at least you got out of mowing lawns for the summer. Edit. Please don't vilify this girl. She was young and coping with a loss, not that I consider myself much of a catch, that she didn't have the experience to deal with. She made a mistake and didn't know how to dig herself out of the hole. If anything, it was a good experience for me because I learned that learning how to break up with someone is as important as learning how to be with someone. That's something I passed on to my own kids, and I've seen it save them a lot of personal grief, or at least help them deal with it. I hold no grudge against this girl, and I was only angry at her a little while. We made up prior to my leaving and parted as friends. Holy poo. That is nuts man. And at 17 everything feels so huge I can't imagine your headspace during all that. But you got one hell of a insane ex-girlfriend story. My brother gave my phone number to some rando, who proceeded to call me at all hours and threatened to RP me. Wait what? Yeah, and the whole family was in on it. In high school one of the cutest girls in my grade came up to me and told me she had a crush on me and wanted to go out on a date. I was skeptical because no one had ever asked me out before, but I was growing into my body pretty well and definitely more attractive than I was as an early teen so I just figured puberty was doing some good work for me. We were 16 17 and had both just got our licenses so she said she'd meet me at the movie theater and we'd go have dinner after the movie. I told my mom and she got all excited and helped me pick out an outfit and took pictures of me before my first ever date. Cringe AF but you know how it goes. I went and got a haircut and my car detailed so it'd be rolling fresh, you know. And believe me I was looking tasty. Fresh shave, hair edged up sharp enough to cut glass, I was dripped out before the phrase even existed. So I show up at the theater a couple minutes early and am waiting for her and after like 15 minutes I think maybe I'll call her to make sure she didnt like have an emergency come up or something, we didnt have texting back then. So I call her and she answers on speakerphone and like 5 other girls are all laughing at me saying things like, ha 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 he actually showed up. So yeah it was all just a prank to hurt my feelings jokes on me I guess. Edit. For everyone asking. I was 16 years old at the time and that was over 10 years ago, I'm 29 now, so the wound has more than healed. As far as I know, the goal of the prank was literally just to see if I believed her in an effort to hurt my feelings as punishment for not being cool enough, I suppose. I'm still not cool at all, but it works for me. Nerds are in fashion these days. Instead of going home I ended up seeing The Dark Knight by myself and, as you all know, that movie effing slaps. By the time Heath Ledger was doing his scars monologue I had forgot why I was upset. I then had dinner for one at Red Robin which also was absolute fire. I think I got a jalapeno something or other burger. I told the waitress I got stood up and she told me I was very handsome and I think about that compliment at least once a month. When I told mom what happened she called the girl a stupid little C, threatened to stab her, and then bought me a PS3. As far as I know, no stabbing took place. Last I remember, the girl in question ended up preggers and missed high school graduation. No idea where she is now, but hopefully Shush has become a better person and has a positive impact on those around her and her son or daughter is happy and well raised.
I've dated plenty of people since then and am in a happy and healthy relationship now with proper communication and respect for each other. And she got a fat ass. The car was a 1992 Jeep Cherokee and it effing sucks but last I saw it, it still ran and the guy I sold it to ended up modding it out for off-roading, so even the car got a good ending. That is nasty, but your mum seems nice. A group of girls at my high school told a girl that they were hanging out at one of their houses at nine near a train station, but they really just made up a time and place that would make her stranded at the last train stop with no more trains home. In the spirit of cruel revenge she should have gotten her mum to call each of those girls and say, less than name greater than didn't come home today, she said she was meeting with you, do you know anything? My so-called friends had my mom drop me off at a mall and we hang out until nearing my bedtime. Mind you this was back when there were pagers, for the generation that grew up with smartphones. Back before cell phones were something everyone had there used, to be a pager, so I asked my friends when we are going back home cause my mom has talked to their mothers about someone dropping me off home. My parents both worked. Anyways they decided to tell me that their mom will pick them up from this door and I should go ahead of them. They left and I was a 12 year old lost kid in a mall with no parent. Luckily one of the male school bullies saw me and was like, Oi nerd what re you doing late, and I just broke down crying. Kid just dropped the bullying and went, Oi 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 what happened, and according to my parents I just blabbered everything I jt and he told me to wait till he found a phone and paged my dad while calling his mom and telling her what happened. Needless to say they got a frantic father going what the hell happened and the girls said they told their mom that I saw my uncle and left with him. But to be honest me and the bully became best of friends. Edit. My parents thought I was kidnapped when they called my uncle who said he hasn't been on shift in that area. Good on the dude for flipping his script. Killing a farmer's cow is some sick joke. The cow was not a meat cow either it was the farmer's beloved pet and he pet it and fed it and played with the friendly cow each and every day. The farmer sued the kids who killed the cow and he 70,000 won and 20k for emotional upset. Stay winning kings. The cow was an old bull, it was the most friendly cow I have ever seen, it was not even muted and had really big horns and loved sitting next to the farmer and just graze next to him. Edit, the kids did not necessarily kill the cow, but forced the old bull to walk upstairs. Cows can walk upstairs, but their anatomy is not built for it and it's extremely painful for them to do so. The old bull broke its front left leg and bellowed in pain for 10 minutes. The farmer had no choice but to shoot and kill his own pet that he has had for the last eight years right then and there on the stairs. The kids pled not guilty in court but they were forced to pay for it all. The bull was a Texas longhorn, common in some areas but rare where we both lived. It was really sad to see the bull gone from the farm. I was neighbors with the farmer and he would always invite me over to play with the animals and feed him and everything. Imagine some kids coming into your yard where your dog was just chilling and killing him. In college, at the end of the year a club I was in had a roast of the outgoing seniors. My friend running the roast couldn't come up with anything for one of the guys, let's call him Ben. To drum up ideas, he called a bunch of Ben's close friends, also in the club, and asked them for things to make fun of Ben about. Thinking this was a confidential conversation, they proceed to absolutely lay into Ben. The guy is seriously lame. Honestly, when I'm talking to a girl and he is there, it is supremely awkward. My friend simply recorded that whole conversation and played it outright for Ben's section of the roast, mortifying Ben and all his friends simultaneously. Sounds like this dude shouldn't have been writing the roast. How hard is it to just say that the dude is so boring that you can't think of anything to say about him? In high school, someone made a pipe bomb and sneakily threw it into a metal trash can. One of my friends unknowingly walked by when it exploded and blew out his eardrum. The trash can looked like a peeled banana afterward. That person was ratted out and expelled. Edit. Kid was arrested afterwards. Saw him 10 years later working at a car wash. All of this happened in 1997. My mom was a teacher and sitting in her room she heard a loud thump and felt a shake. She went running to see what it was and found out a bomb had gone off in the room nearby and a student had been caught in the blast. She comforted the student who said, I just picked it up and it exploded. School was closed, obviously, big investigation. My mom was first on scene and she was questioned about the student. Turns out the student my mom comforted was the one who set the bomb. Because he hadn't gotten a major project done, 
Somehow he convinced himself the best way to get out of it was to blow up all the other projects. Teacher, I know I turned it in, but it was blown up by a bomb. I don't know if the student was seriously hurt, definitely expelled, e. Quizzed my mom for more details on it. This was in the late 80s, so bombs were either very uncommon or believed uncommon. There had been a bomb threat earlier in the day, so when my mom heard the boom, she thought, oh god the bomb went off. The bomber was literally the only injury, and that's why the detective, who was my tilde tilde dad's sister's husband tilde tilde uncle on my dad's side, knew that he was the perp, because it was a very amateur bomb. Any prank involving pretending to ask someone on a date that I witnessed in my youth group. It was pretty common, everyone had it happen at least once, and it happened to me twice but both times I found the guy repulsive and told them so. A guy once came up to me and did the whole, ahaha my friend thinks you're cute smiley face, routine. The kicker was I knew this kid very well, he was friends with all of the guys who bullied me in middle school and high school and had even picked on me himself a few times. My reaction amounted to, how stupid do you think I am, Kyle? Any of those super dumb, pranks, that people do to fast food workers. My, ex, friend thought it was a funny prank to kill my brother's hamster and tie it up and dress it in ridiculous ways. I remember reading somewhere, probably on Reddit, that someone as a kid had a friend over who was a compulsive liar and was trying to convince him he had super speed. To prove it he said he was going to throw OP's hamster as hard as he could and then go catch it before it hit the wall. Needless to say a few, seconds later Oppa standing there shocked as his hamster was flattened against the wall and immediately died. The kid apparently tried to play it off but when the mother came up and saw what happened she told him to leave and that he wasn't allowed to come back. I genuinely think we really need to watch out for kids like this. Kids that care more about being funny and impressing other kids than about the life of an innocent creature. Either they genuinely don't know that it's wrong to kill things which is horrifying or they do know but care more about themselves which is also horrifying. As a school prank the neighboring high school adopted a bloodhound our school's mascot killed and left it on the ground in front of the school. Their only punishment was cancelling prom. Holy poo this one made me so angry. It was at a company Christmas party. We all participated in gift exchange. Well a fellow employee gifted fake scratch off lotto tickets to another employee. She scratched them and legit thought she 10,000 won, she was screaming and crying with joy, single mum so you can imagine. She started calling her family tell the good news and then she's telling everyone drinks are on me. Eventually, the gifter came clean with the news that they were fake. And then she had a nervous breakdown it was really sad. Her brother eventually came to pick her up from the party, designated driver, and he beat the poo out of the other employee who gave the gift. I never attended another Christmas party ever again. Too much drama and something always goes wrong or people can't handle themselves and then they start hooking up with each other. It's just a rule I have now. Saw a kid at high school cafeteria spend 20 minutes removing seeds from jalapenos and chopping up the seeds until he had a handful. He walked over to a different table and threw the handful of sliced up seeds into the eyes, face of another kid. Sounds more like assault than a prank. Kid didn't even get in trouble at all, was between two skaters, the other guy had to leave school that day but never ratted an IIRC the payback was a nut punt from behind. My high school was poo. Friend of mine had a crush on his co-worker, it was sort of an open secret. His manager tried to help him, offered advice, some things to say, small gifts she might be into, etc. What no one knew at the time was that said manager and said co-worker had recently started dating and hadn't told anyone yet. So he meant it as a prank on his new girlfriend to be put into these awkward situations, but my friend's feelings were really hurt when it all came out. Wow, that is some class of assholery right there. I put meatballs in the chute for the ice maker so when my roommate went to get some ice his glass filled up with meatballs. I laughed until I realized that meant the further ice would taste like meatballs as well. In middle school a girl came up to us on the playground and told this dude to, go see the principal, he's looking for you, he got a call that your mom died. Then as soon as the dude ran away she told us all she just made it up. It was effing horrible. I feel like the girl wouldn't have a lot of friends after this. Yeah, she went from one of a clique of popular girls to pretty much an outcast. It was like weeks, days before graduation anyhow, so I didn't really see a big fallout from it, but the guy was pretty messed up as a result at least for that last bit I knew him. This happened to me, 
7th grade during Valentine's Day we had candy grams and cutesy stuff we could send to our friends and obviously middle schoolers are sending them to their crushes, they would receive these candy grams during a class period as someone came by dropping them off. You could write a little message and then who it's from. I got one from this guy. Friend I liked and went up to him the next period and brought it up and said it was really cute and thanks. He looked a little confused but was like, no problem? I felt kind of dumb after that and walked away, just to find out the next day that it was one of my friends, who sent it to me and just put his name on it to make it seem like it was him. I mean, at least he was nice enough to go along with it because he was just as confused. We used to have these in my junior high too. I got my first and final one in the 8th grade. It was from my math teacher. Happened to me. Was at my first school dance in middle school. Was always the shy kid, so I was surprised when one of the popular chicks came to ask me to dance. I said no because I was shy, but I was elated that I got asked. A few minutes later I'm in the bathroom stall and a few kids come in and start talking about how they paid her 10 bucks to ask me, and if I said yes she would have just tripped me and made me look dumb. I never went to another dance all throughout middle and high school. Even prom. On the bright side you said no which kind of made her look dumb lol. Had a girl messaging me some lyrics to a song, looked like she was trying to admit to having feelings but when I said I liked her back she said it was just for a TikTok, I told her it was pretty annoying and then she started saying that she actually did like me and she was sorry. But turns out that was just for her take screenshots and post those too, I don't know if that counts as a prank but a. Nah, you have the right to be mad there. She's literally using you to publicly shame you for her gain and literally making money doing it. Catfishing seems like it can be pretty damaging to young people. I had it firsthand, my mate catfished me when I was coming back from my lowest point. Everyone thought it was funny until I started self-harming in poo. Got sent home and didn't go back to school until the next term. On the bright side you get careful with strangers and the friends you make, so there's that. Happened to me, at middle school I was very naive and a boy from my class kept flirting with me and everybody was pushing me to ask him out, but I was very shy. After a while, he asked me to be his BF during gym class, and all of my girl, friends, from class told me to say yes, BC he really liked me and etc. Turns out, after I did say yes a told me that it was all a prank, and almost everyone in the class had participated in convincing me that it was real. Just why man, I had so much trouble in trusting people again, and for years I turned a really, brave and tough, facade to avoid that ever happening again. Makes me think sometimes about how kids are really the worst. At my school we used to do senior pranks. They were all approved by the teachers and were good fun. Well, a separate group of seniors wanted to do a second prank, and they ended up setting off a smoke bomb in the cafeteria. The whole cafeteria had to be evacuated. No more senior pranks for us. My friend stole my brand new set of Copics and switched all the caps. It ruined some of the markers because of color bleeding. I retaliated by dumping glitter in his backpack. An entire little container. Needless to say, we don't talk anymore. Edit, thank you for the wholesome award. But also why? Edit 2 BC I just remembered another detail, he switched the caps the first time. The second time, he switched caps, and even some of the tips. Best part? A teacher watched him do it, and said nothing. Though, she did warn him I would definitely get revenge. Well, I ended up with a referral for that glitter and when talking to the principal, I told her what he'd done, adding in that he also stole my school ID for more than two days, and he got a referral too. Our detention together was asterisk amazing, asterisk also forgot to mention he sexually harassed me a couple times bc I'm gay and he thinks that's hot. Anyways ss. Yikes that's bad. Copics aren't cheap. For the uninitiated. An individual Copic marker costs around $8 and a full set of 400 plus sells for $3,500. I remember years ago I saw a prank on YouTube gather attention for being genuinely cruel. These guys kidnapped their friend in black outfit, ski mask setups, tying his hands and feet, blocking his eyes, and throwing him in a car. They then took him to a rooftop and tied him to a chair and were talking about the ways they were going to torture and eventually kill him. They'd be bringing up personal things as well to freak him out even more. The guy was genuinely effing terrified, you could tell. The bawling, babbling kind of panic attack. Of course his friends then untied him and revealed themselves saying it was a prank but they did the damage and the guy wanted nothing to do with them. Who effing would? Sam Pepper, right? If so, you left out the part where the kidnapped person had a friend in the car who was also in on the prank. 
the kidnappers, pretended to shoot him in the head with a pistol while he and his friend were both tied up. That whole debacle was so messed up. I don't have a specific example in my life, but I've always thought those fake lottery tickets are cruel. Those people think their life is going to change, and then it's all yanked away from them while people laugh. Same energy as when a parent gifts their kids something in the box for an iPad, Switch, something expensive and fancy, but it's really something putty and lame inside. The entire joke is, ha ha, you thought your dreams were coming true, but asterisk then they didn't, asterisk. Look at us, a bunch of kidders, to toy with your emotions like that. I'm friends with a couple where the husband did the fake winner ticket thing to his wife, then three years later she quietly replaced the real tickets he put in her stocking with her own fake winner tickets, scratched them off eye and ripped up a $50,000 winner in front of him, claiming he must be playing that stupid joke on her again. He panicked bad, grabbed the pieces of the tickets, put them back together, saw it was a winner, and proceeded to freak out, went on to Google, researched if ripped up lottery tickets could be redeemed, basically cried, she let it run to the absolute end where he went to call some number on the back and saw that novelty text. That is the best way I've ever heard to turn it around on someone, holy poo. Tears of joy. If I was the wife, I know I would have rubbed it in, yeah, how does it feel, f -er? And had it actually been a real winner, my ripping it up would have been your fault. I don't know the person. And yet everybody knows the kid, but at my school, he'd unscrew the razors of hand-held pencil sharpeners and then try to discreetly cut people's forearms and legs. What he'd been trying to accomplish is, and this is just twisted, make the people's parents think they'd be cutting themselves. Whenever the victim went to try and tell the teachers, they'd think the same thing. Poo went down when the person he'd been constantly targeting beat the poo out of him. Victim was put to UV, he got out practically free, and now he uses needles to poke holes into people. Asterisk 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 he's not a phlebotomist, or tattooist. Asterisk 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 last I heard from high school, incidents like the same happened, but with needles. Though, he's been way more discreet about it. Nobody knows who's doing it, other than me. That's not a prank. That's a deranged individual. When I was in 8th grade a thing called turtling and zip tying backpacks were popular. Well one day early in the year on the bus ride home a kid decided to zip tie a 6th grader's backpack to the leg of the chair which is welded to the floor. When he got up to leave and realized his backpack was stuck he started panicking trying to get it undone and eventually had to leave the backpack and he was stressing out saying his mum was going to freak out on him. He looked like he was about to cry. I remember this bullpoo. Someone did something similar on my bus. Bus driver pulls out this knife and cuts the tie. She then looks around at everyone and says that if it ever happens again she is parking the bus and no one was leaving until someone admitted to being an idiot. That was the day we learned the bus driver had a knife and didn't F around. Everyone behaved for the rest of the year. My bus driver just yelled at the kid to hurry up and get off the bus tears of joy. A group of friends got together and one of the usuals, let's call him Eddie, didn't make it. Eddie texts asking what they're up to and they sarcastically respond, celebrating your birthday without you. Lo and behold, it was coincidentally Eddie's birthday weekend and he had no birthday plans. Upon realizing this, the group bought and decorated a cake that read, Happy Birthday Eddie, and staged a series of fake birthday party photos to make him think they forgot to invite him to his own party. To keep the prank going, they dropped off the smashed, leftover cake on his doorstep. He still hasn't found out so they keep making elaborate stories as to why they forgot to invite him. Edit. Spelling. Also, this isn't my squad and I don't know Eddie so this is all word of mouth but last I heard, it's unclear if he knows of the situation and the group paid him back with a block of expensive cheese in his mailbox marked, Happy Birthday Eddie. This would be hilarious if years later everyone found out that Eddie was effing with them and it wasn't his birthday, his real birthday is like six months later than what he told the group. He just kept quiet for so long to keep the prank going. Watch Eddie do the same thing the next time someone else has a B-Day. We had a roast for my buddy in college that was supposed to be a lot of fun. My roommate decided to go after his ex-girlfriend the entire time during his speech instead of our buddy, which is a kind of funny concept. It ended up being a drunken therapy session for him where he aired out all the most personal aspects of their relationship to a room of 50 people. He ended the speech by throwing multiple pairs of panties she left at his house into the crowd. She was so mortified she called the police. Most awkward party ever. When they gave that raccoon the cotton candy. Bastards. For context to anybody who doesn't know, raccoons, apparently, wash their food before eating it, 
and these guys gave a raccoon a piece of cotton candy and the raccoon washed it for it to disappear into the water. This is one cruel world we live in. Making someone believe that they have won the lottery and crush their happy feelings afterwards. This is the most cruel thing I can imagine. Making someone really happy and make them realize that it was all a lie. My father-in-law's friend did this to his wife. He recorded the draw from the week previous and bought a ticket with those numbers. She watched the recording thinking it was real time. I actually felt sick for her when I heard that story. I was a huge Led Zeppelin fan growing up, and obviously my dad knows this. One day I got a message from him saying he had just met Robert Plant in a shop and Plant had invited me to come sit in for a studio session. I was naturally super excited and told some of my friends about it. I couldn't wait. An hour later, my dad told me he had made it all up. He's done worse things, but this one still cuts deep because of how mean-spirited and unnecessary it was. Russian YouTuber was arrested after locking his pregnant girlfriend outside in Russian winter wearing only her underwear. She died of hypothermia right on their balcony. And before that, he kept literally shoving her around. He didn't even care she was dead. He only showed remorse after the cops arrested him. It was horrible. I used to work on tugboats. Some deckhand brought a bottle of liquid ass spray aboard. Said deckhand proceeded to use said spray. Try as we might, we couldn't seem to get rid of the smell. Five guys, three months, a tugboat bathed in liquid ass. I do not miss that job. Edit. Looks like my top comment is about liquid ass spray. Never change folks, never change. A group of students in my high school wrote up and passed around an unofficial page of senior superlatives before graduation. The popular kids got named neutral, good things like, most likely to own a tech company, or, first to get a million dollars. Unpopular kids got, ugliest, or, most likely to die in prison, or, most cowardly. I was, most UNF able. In hindsight, I'm not sure if it really was a prank or just a bunch of really mean-spirited people. Edit. To those asking, I got sexually assaulted in college but I've never had consensual sex. Maybe it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. I'm older than you probably think. I've worked hard and gained a modest level of success through my career. Don't know if a relationship will ever happen for me. Edit 2. Clenched fist to everyone who catches the chemistry reference. Edit 3. I do hope to have a relationship someday. It's a strange and scary idea for me, yes. I tend to build emotional walls and not put myself out there as a result of this. Yes, I've had therapy. I really do have a good life, I have friends, a decent career, I travel a lot. I'm not confident enough for online dating, I've tried it, and otherwise I'm just trying to live the best life I can. I was so mad when those came out in the yearbook because apparently it was voted on, I had never seen nor heard of any actual ballot or vote happening. Same with pretty much any of the things we supposedly got a choice on during our senior year. Our chosen grad song was something I never even heard of. I may have the conducted the most cruel prank without even meaning to. While in high school once a month or so there was a half day on a Friday. It was posted and scheduled in advance. My friend and I liked to remind each other in the halls loudly that it was half day when it wasn't the right week. People would get excited and happy then after lunch they'd see me and remind me that I was an asshole for getting their hopes up. Priceless and a harmless prank. One week we did this and I guess the right people overheard. A few kids' parents were bus drivers. They called their parents to remind them it was a half day. Somehow it snowballed and at 11.30 buses had parked out front of every school in the district and they had to cancel the other half of the day because the bus service drivers were pissed to find out they had to cancel their plans for no reason. Principal called me and my friend to the office and said he knows it's our fault, but no one fact-checked it and so it wasn't really our fault. He smiled and sent us on our way to enjoy our half day. I actually kinda like this one lol. I mean, it sucks for the bus drivers and all but no one got emotionally or physically harmed. This is just plain legendary. I agree. Those pranks where people get hurt or traumatized are not funny. Especially if they are random bystanders. Demi Lovato paid a prostitute to sexually assault one of her employees as a prank. Edit. To anyone more concerned with using proper pronouns than the sexual assault of an employee, Get your poo together and find out what you did to sink so low as a human. 
Whoa, what? Seriously? Not the cruelest but I had a co-worker call and tell me that my services were no longer required. I believed it for a minute. I started getting upset on the phone and my co-worker realized she needed to fess up and tell me it was a joke. I didn't find it funny. This incident happened a long time ago and I didn't do anything about it. If this incident happened today, my co-worker would be explaining her actions to our planting someone's face on the cake on their birthday. If that happened to me on my birthday, regardless of what day it is, you bet violence will ensue. I just saw a video of someone doing this to a one-year-old. They weren't secured in the high chair and ended up falling onto the floor on top of the cake. It was effed up. Thank you for watching. We upload new videos every day, so be sure to come back for more fun. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video.